So the final, the seventh uh, aspect of a theology of science might also be a surprising one, and it's the role and work of love in negotiating our relationship with the natural world. That's the human activity we now call science. Perhaps back to Proverbs 8 again. Remember, wisdom, uh, the, uh, the early uh, metaphorical personification of what we now call science, um, rejoiced at the sight of God, who took delight in all mankind. There's a relationship of love going on right at the beginning, if you like, of our exploration of the natural world. It's only love, of course, that survives the pain and anguish we talked about before, um, that St Paul describes is the pain as, if, as in the pain of childbirth that takes us from our present um, flawed and painful physical creation to the new creation, the painless one. Um, it's only, of course, uh, it's childbirth is the greatest act of, act of, of love itself. And as commentators and philosophers of science, maybe like Paul Feyerabend have, have pointed out, and, and others, other, others since, who've dived below the surface of our rather brittle scientific methods that we tend to describe as being a neat and rather clinical way of experimentally testing our hypotheses. No, the truth is that when a scientific theory is first formed, it's very weak and vulnerable. Nearly all theories, when they're first conceived, are in conflict with quite a large corpus of data. I was involved in a bit of a revolution, of a minor revolution, in the uh, molecular science of um, plastics and uh, their molten form and how they, how they flow. Um, and we had a beautiful theory. It wasn't mine. It was one I borrowed and worked with. Therefore, it was stunningly beautiful and simple. Um, and very convincing that we were sure uh, was the basis of, of how tangled molecules work. Most of the world disagreed with us at that point and disagreed by pointing out that we were wrong with the data. Now, um, if we hadn't fallen in love with this idea so that when it was an infant, um, when it was not fully grown and unable to withstand the arguments of the scientific conference and the um, misunderstood and misinterpreted data at the time, then it simply would have been snuffed out at, at birth. But fortunately, uh, we kept it going long enough until it grew. Um, it was ill-formed. We had to learn more about it. Um, now, that's a metaphor for perhaps a, a child theory growing up into adulthood. Um, but that works on that rather humble level. As Paul Feyerabend points out, it works on the level of perhaps the greatest scientific revolution of all, the move from geocentrism to heliocentrism. Um, it's very clear that at the point of, say, the Galileo affair, there was no strong scientific case for heliocentrism. This is a surprise to many people, but uh, um, both the magnitude of the minor planets and the absence of the observation of stellar parallax. If the Earth is moving around six months by six months, we should see the stars moving when we don't at all. Of course, the motion is there. It's just very, very small because the stars are so astonishingly distant. Another example of how uh, one has sometimes to believe almost irrationally at the beginning of a scientific theory in order for that theory to come into fruition. And this aspect of love operating in a wisdom concept of our human understanding of nature, which is distinctively relational, within relationships that biblical love operates, is perhaps not surprising. But without that, we don't have a theology of science.